At this time, I have the pleasure of welcoming all of you to this, this very historic celebration, this gathering that we have here. It's called the Blue Stem Acquisition Event, is what it says at the top of my page. And what a, what a wonderful, what a historic event that we all have here. My name is Tim Tallchief. I have the pleasure of serving as the Master of Ceremonies today. Now I'd like to introduce a man who really needs no introduction. Uh, a, a truly a great leader and has served in leadership capacity many, many years, for decades. Ladies and gentlemen, if you will, help me welcome to the podium our Principal Chief, Jeffrey Standing Bear. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and uh, congratulations to everyone. And there are so many dignitaries here, I, I just don't know where to begin. So I'll just uh, join Tim in welcoming everyone. Nine months ago, while meeting with my friend Tim, an Osage man named Mark Freeman IV paid uh, us an unexpected visit at my office. And he said, Chief, Ted Turner is talking about selling the Blue Stem Ranch and the Osage need to buy it. We asked Mark to keep in contact with us and on December 23, 2016, I received a phone call from Tim saying that he had a copy of the bid package and for us to be a qualified bidder, we had 30 days to make the bid with money behind it. Between Christmas and New Year's, I met with several people, but not before calling Assistant Chief Redcorn. And thank you for working with me in those late evenings trying to figure out a, a, a good plan. And then my second call was to David Lamb of the Bank of Oklahoma and I disclosed to him what Assistant Chief and I were talking about, how to do this within such a short time frame. And Mr. Lamb said they were with us all the way. With that information, I went next to the board chairman of the Osage Nation Gaming Enterprise Board and explained to Mark Sims what we are trying to do. And Mr. Sims said, well, we can do this, but, but we need Tulsa Casino to have an expansion and for game space, for card tables, and for phase one of a hotel. And on January 11, 2016, our Osage Nation Gaming Enterprise Board voted unanimously on this plan, which included the purchase of this ranch and expansion of the Tulsa Casino. We then went to our Osage Congress and discussed with them what we would like to do. And as our government is set up, they set the minimum price for the opening bid and then the maximum amount that we would be able to purchase the ranch for. And over the next few months, in intrigue that would be worthy of a small movie, and a secrecy, and sharing information with those who needed to know, which included all 12 members of our Congress, all of our gaming board members, and important staff, we were able to reach a point where our bid was accepted as the most successful bid. After that, a lot of people worked together to prepare the sales and purchase agreement on February 28, 2016, and a lot more people were involved in getting to the point where we could close this transaction on June 8, 2016. And on behalf of the Osage Nation, 
I was able to walk out of that room with a deed showing the sole owner of these 43,000 acres to be the Osage Nation. We also found it was in the best interests of the Osage Nation to leave room for another document, the assignment and transfer of all water rights. Yeah. That's there. The owners of this land are now 20,190 Osages. This is the same land our ancestors walked 100 years ago. We are working with the federal government to expedite the return of this land to federal Indian reservation status. That means this land will be held in trust for us, the Osage living today, and for the generations to come. The federal trust status reaffirms our trust relationship and our treaties as written between the United States of America and the Osage Nation. It also protects the land beyond our protections from any threat of abuse and because it's held by Osage everywhere for them in trust, it cannot be sold or given away. We cannot ever again be separated from this land. One of the most important conditions of this purchase is, like I said, the banks have no recourse. And to that, we greatly appreciate the work of our gaming commission and along with our gaming board. And I believe you're going to be speaking soon. As far as the present use of this land and the future, that's going to be determined by future generations, of course. But today, we have a duty to make sure the land is not destroyed. That is why among all the dozens of proposals we have received for use of this land, some cannot be allowed to occur. A good example of this is a proposal to bring in 7,000 wild Mustang horses. This use might bring in more money than other uses, but the effect on the land would be significant. I hope one year from now, we see this land being a refuge for our sacred bison, a classroom for our people, especially the youth, a place where Osage companies and individuals will conduct profitable cattle operations and a place for well-regulated hunting and fishing recreation. Already we have heard of two proposals for profit from profit-making bison operations. We have three suggested paths for hunting and fishing on a profit-making operation. And these are all diverse proposals. And my conclusion is that it appears 43,000 acres is big enough for more than one use. Many of us carry the clan names of our people. These names come from the world around us and those matters which are important to the Wajaji. Names such as Watsekawa, the Radiant Star, Leitanghoe, the Grey Hawk, Kulawe, Sacred Eagle Woman, Tsetanka, the Buffalo Bull, 
are just a few of these names. Importantly, you will not find names among us such as profit, rent, or return of investment. Those are words fitting for our casinos, which provides us the money for education scholarships, our health benefit programs, our traditional dance arbors being renovated, our police, our elder programs, and our land purchases. So we must be careful not to stray far away from the value of something good. Our traditions, our language, and our land all mean something special when you put them together. That alone has a value which is priceless. I believe we can do great things in saving ourselves from becoming only a remembrance in history. 100 years from now, we will continue to be known as the Wajaje. And people can say, the Wajaje have their own culture. The Wajaje have their own language. And the Wajaje have their own lands. Thank you.